Hello biology class, welcome back to another lecture. This one is lesson three, uh, titled salivary glands, throat, and esophagus. Uh, as you can see above me, there are the key points. There are four of them again. Uh, as we move through this lesson, we're gonna talk about more than those four things, but those are the four key things that we're going to discuss. Um, let's jump right in. So we have salivary glands first. So the purpose of the salivary glands and saliva is to lubricate food um, that moves through the digestive tract. It is very easy, like you, you've probably done the, the cracker challenge where you just eat those soda crackers that are really, really dry and it's really, really hard to swallow. That's because there's no lubrication. So there needs to be some lubrication, some saliva to get it moving down into your stomach. Uh, the saliva also initiates chemical digestion. As we learned in the first lesson, uh, it starts to break down carbohydrates. Amylase breaks down carbs or starch. Uh, and that's why if you have a piece of bread in your mouth, it will break down in your saliva. It'll become all mushy and kind of dissolve uh, after a while. Uh, whereas like if you have a carrot in your mouth and you don't do anything to it, it doesn't break down. Uh, saliva also helps in speech and it helps in regulating the water content in your body uh, because when you breathe you release moisture so if your mouth is dry you're going to be releasing less moisture out into the air and conserving water um, so the salivary glands there are three that we are going to discuss you can see them on your diagram in your notes I think they're right here yes okay so I'm going to flip back and forth a little bit. So pause on the screen so you can copy this down. Uh, the parotid gland is in the back of the throat on top and it empties into the upper gum. So the gland is in the back of your mouth and it empties up into this part here and keeps your upper gums moist. So that would be this gland right here, the parotid gland. We have the sublingual gland, which is under the tongue. So lingual is speech so under the tongue which makes sense because the tongue is used for speech that is this one down here sublingual under the tongue and then we have sorry then we have the submandibular gland so the submandibular gland is in the back of the throat on the bottom and it's submandibular because the mandible is your jaw so under the jaw back of the throat on the bottom so that's down here under the jaw and it produces saliva as well. So these three are three major glands that keep your mouth uh, moist. They also have tubes that connect on either side and all throughout uh, to dispense that saliva. Um, the pharynx, actually, I'll take a sip of water just because that's what we're talking about. Okay. So the pharynx, uh, the pharynx is the cavity that connects the oral cavity or the mouth and the nasal passage, which is like through your nose where you breathe. So the pharynx is essentially your throat. Um, the title when it says throat, I could also have said pharynx. Uh, the pharynx is part of the digestive system and part of the condu conducting zone of the respiratory system, essentially part of the uh, structures that bring air into your body. Um, the pharynx uh, essentially allows the food to connect to not only the esophagus but the air to the trachea th all through one tube. Um, so it filters and warms and moistens air when, we, when it conducts it into the lungs but also can direct food into the stomach, into the esophagus. So the human pharynx is conventionally divided into three sections. The nasopharynx would be the top portion, the oropharynx would be the middle portion, and the laryngopharynx would be the lower portion. They are all part of the throat. Um, the function, again, of the throat is to allow us to chew and breathe at the same time and allow uh, us to move air and food through the same hole. The epiglottis. So there are two videos for you to watch. It kind of explains what these are. So I'd watch them after this explanation. But again, remember to pause and write this down in your own words. So the epiglottis is a little leaf-shaped flap in the throat that prevents food from entering the windpipe. 
Uh, if you feel your throat, your windpipe is the one that's in the front. So if you're eating food, you don't want it to fall down the first hole, right? You want it to be moved backwards to your esophagus. Your esophagus is farther back. This first tube is your air pipe, your trachea, which we'll talk about in the respiratory system. Um, but with the esophagus is behind that. So the epiglottis is a little leaf-shaped flap that goes over your windpipe when you're swallowing, and it prevents food from entering your lungs. Uh, when you're breathing, it stands open to allow air in and out of the larynx, which is the um, air portion of your throat, essentially. Uh, so the epiglottis is, uh, sorry, epiglottitis is the inflammation of the epiglottis. So anything that ends in itis is inflammation. So epiglottitis is inflammation of the epiglottis. Uh, it can res result from an infection or other causes such as physical trauma, uh, and a severely swollen epiglottis can block the airway and breathing can be difficult. Uh, so it can also be fatal if it cuts air off completely. So as the video uh, will show, it is just a little tiny flap and it closes whenever you're swallowing and it pushes food into your esophagus. If you've ever had food or water go down the wrong hole and you've coughed, your epiglottis has failed you. It is your epiglottis's fault. So the diagram, I believe you have this as well. Let's just go over it again. We have the um, tongue and the oral passage, the oral cavity. We also have the nasal cavity. So this would be the nasopharynx, this would be the oropharynx, and this would be the laryngopharynx. Uh, you can see here we have the air pipe, the larynx. So this is the epiglottis. And when, it's, when you swallow, the food comes down. This leaf-shaped flap folds this way and connects to this part right here, which makes food go into the esophagus. It does not allow it to go uh, into the larynx, into the lungs, which would be very, very bad. So again, you can feel your larynx, and which is your voice box, essentially, and your uh, windpipe. Uh, you do not want food going in there, so there's a flap, the epiglottis, that, moves, that lets it go past by folding down, and the food rolls over it into the back tube, which is the esophagus. This is, I know this might look like the back of the head, but this is actually the back of the head, so there's lots more stuff in the neck, but if you can see the tube here is the esophagus where you want food to go. Next thing we'll talk about is the tonsils. So the palatine tonsils is another word for them, and it is part of the palate, which we talked about in the last lesson, so uh, that should ring a bell. They are close to that soft palate. They're a pair of soft tissue masses located at the rear of the throat, or the pharynx. The tonsils are part of the lymphatic system. Essentially, the lymphatic system helps you to fight infections. And that's why they get all inflamed, is because they are, they are the site that fights infections. They are the part that needs the most blood and the most resources to get that stuff up and running. So they get swollen a lot. Uh, however, removal of the tonsils does not seem to increase the susceptibility to infection at all. So they don't really do any particular job that can't be done throughout the rest of your body. They're just annoying to get swollen all the time. Tonsils can vary widely in size and swell in response to infection. So the swelling part is the problem. Uh, brace yourself. This is a picture of tonsils. So they're just kind of masses that can get swollen and it can get in the way. So when they're removed, um, they can be a relief. Now, I'm informed uh, that they are not really taken out very often anymore. They don't generally cause too many problems anymore. So um, that is kind of a procedure of the past unless very necessary. But there you go, some tonsils that have been removed. The next part we're going to talk about is the larynx, which is the lower part of the throat, essentially. The larynx is commonly called the voice box, or it has your vocal cords in it. It's an organ in the top of the neck involved in breathing, producing sound, and protecting the trachea against food aspiration. So it is also another layer of protection against letting food in. Uh, when you get it caught in your throat <clears throat> and you cough, that is your larynx catching it. Uh, the larynx houses the vocal cords and manipulates pitch and volume, which is essential for phonation, essentially talking. 
Uh, the larynx is what produces the sound, and then our mouth and our tongue and our teeth manipulate it to make it into words and sentences and books and movies and this video. Um, so I hope it's making it into your ear holes, okay. Um, make sure you copy this down, make sure you pause it, and then listen to me again, because sometimes I know I can go a little bit fast. The last portion, which is key point four, is the esophagus, and it is sounds simple. It is the passageway from the pharynx or from the throat down into the stomach. So peristalsis is the process that transport digest transports digesting food through the digestive system. Remember that esophagus has peristalsis to push food towards the stomach. That's why you can drink water uh, upside down. Uh, I don't recommend it, but you can even eat a sandwich uh, lying on your back. That's because the esophagus pushes food towards the stomach through peristalsis or transportation. Um, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to explore the esophagus a little bit more. So there's a video that I'd like you to watch. It's also in your notes. So uh, check that out. It is about a particular um, condition that has to do with the esophagus. And then I'd like you to research more about the symptoms and treatments of the disease known as achalasia, and through that you'll get a better idea of the function and the structure of the esophagus. Uh, if you guys have any questions about any of this, please let me know because after lesson three, there is a quiz for you to write. So when you're done uh, all of the work from the three lessons, please let me know and we will write, uh, I'll, ha I'll give you the quiz to write. Um, Thanks very much for watching everyone, I appreciate it, and have yourself a good one.